Hi everyone, in today's video, I'll show you guys how to check a bond online. If you don't exactly know what a bond is, then please check out the what is a bond video link below. So first off, it is important to know that buying or selling a security requires an investment account from your bank or any other financial institution or an online broker. This will allow you to view, buy or sell different securities by yourself just by going onto the site and logging into your account. This is a simple process where you can usually sign up online for free, but don't forget that each financial institution or online broker will have different commission fees when you actually start buying or selling. Since I'm in Canada, I have a bank account with RBC and they have their own website called RBC Direct Investing like right over here, and it lets you do your trading which is what I'll be using to look at bonds. TD Bank for example has their own online trading website called Web Broker Online Trading. CIBC has CIBC Investors Edge. And on this page, we have Quest Trade, which is one of many online trading companies in Canada. So this is how the RBC Direct Investing page looks like. Obviously, each site will look different, so look out, but the wording and concepts should be similar. So let's start with this place in order tab right here, which shows me what I am able to buy and sell. There are stocks and ETFs, options, mutual funds, and fixed income. Bonds are a type of fixed income security, so I will click here. We are looking for bonds, so I will select that under the product section right here. Security is the type of bond that we're looking for such as Government of Canada, Provincial, Municipal, or Corporate Bonds. I'll pick Corporate Bonds for this example. Then we can view bonds by term, which is a set, of, a set range of years that we plan on holding the bond for. We can hold it for one to two years, two to five years, and so on. Or we can pick Define and put exact dates using this calendar function, but I'll choose five to eight years using term because it's quick and easy. The amount section is asking how much money we want to spend on these bonds. Now the site will tell you what the minimum purchase amount is for each type of bond. So let me show you what it looks like over here if I click this little question mark. This screen pops up and you get to see the minimum purchase amount and minimum increments required for all of these bonds which RBC offers. Since we're looking at corporate bonds, like right over here, we need, we need to spend at least $5,000 to buy these bonds. And if you want more, then you have to spend at increments of $1,000 minimum. So now that I have this information, I will put, let's say $7,000 into the amount box. There is this advanced search button over here I'll click on it and it's basically asking for more information to narrow your search results. It's asking what coupon rates I'm looking for, yield percentages, and price per $100. I'm happy without this so far, so I will click view search results. And here we go. Based on my search criteria for corporate bonds with a maturity within the next five to eight years and with roughly $7,000 to invest, this is what comes up. So let's say we wanna buy this very first bond right over here. And I'll click this plus button to see additional information about the bond. Now, when you buy a bond, you are essentially signing into an agreement with specific terms and agreements with the company that is selling the bond. So under description, it tells us what the bond is. Uh, it says George Weston, 4.115%, June 17, 2024. Right next to it is the maturity date. This is one of the main terms that you agree upon with the issuer. This is the date that the bond expires and you, the bondholder, will receive the face value of the bond unless the issuer goes bankrupt and can't pay you back. In other words, this company, George Weston, will return the $7,000 back to you once the bond expires on June 17th, 2024, as it says right here. However, Let's say you hold this bond for two years and want to get rid of it. Then you would have to sell it for whatever the current market price of the bond is. Then we have the coupon rate. 
This is the stated interest rate that a corporation will pay you between the time you purchase the bond and the maturity date. Bondholders love the interest income because it's a fixed amount that they know they will receive as long as they hold the bond to maturity and as long as the company does not go bankrupt. Usually the interest is paid every six months to the bondholder, but it depends on the terms and conditions of the bond. This George Weston bond shows that the coupon rate is 4.115%, but it doesn't say how often the coupon is, is paid, so it is fair to assume it is annually. Now the question is how much this coupon payment is going to be in a dollar amount? Well, we take the 4.115%, and multiply it by the face value of the bond, as it says right here. Face value and par value both mean the same thing, by the way. And this means that we would receive $288.05 every year in interest payments. Like I said before, coupon payments are usually received every six months. So if we divide this annual amount by two, we would get $144.03 every six months. Since the bond expires in June 2024, we would receive interest payments for a total of five years. If the coupon payments are paid semi-annually, then that means you would get paid twice a year. So five years times two payments a year means that you will get 10 interest payments over the life of the bond. So $144.03 semi-annually multiplied by 10 periods means you will receive a total of $1,440.30 in interest payments by holding this bond till maturity. Now keep this number in mind, we will use it later on. Now beside the coupon rate, we have the approximate semi-annual yield, which is 2.516%. A lot of people who have taken finance courses probably know this as the yield to maturity, it means that you would receive an estimated 2.516% return on your investment every six months, assuming you buy the bond today and hold it till maturity. Now, the problem with this number is that it is an estimated yield. This percentage takes into consideration how much time is left until maturity, credit quality of the company or government issuing the bond, any specific terms of the bond, and general market conditions. Most of these factors cannot be included in your calculations, which means you have to start assuming. I don't like assuming anything, so I won't look at this percentage too much. Next, we have the approximate price per $100 Canadian. Try to think of the $100 almost as a benchmark for the price of a bond. This price will only be $100 if the stated coupon rate, which is 4.115%, is exactly the same as the market rates. Now, market rates will always change based on supply and demand, financial conditions of governments and corporations, and several other factors, which means they're constantly changing. However, the coupon rate does not change because it's the rate that you agree upon and is stated in the contract when you purchase a bond. So the George Weston bond is currently selling at $106 and about 76 cents, which is greater than our benchmark of $100. Oh, by the way, some trading platforms will label this price as the ask price. Remember when we said we wanted to spend $7,000 on this bond? Well, it technically won't be $7,000 because this bond is selling for a premium since it's over 100. If we multiply the $7,000 par value by 1.067584, we will actually pay roughly $7,473.09 for the bond. When you actually purchase the bond, banks or online brokers will include commission fees, accrued interest, and taxes in your final price, so your cost will vary depending on who you're investing with. So I hope you remember our coupon calculations. By doing the math, we figured out that we will receive a total of approximately $1,440 in interest payments if we bought this George Weston bond today and held it till maturity. We also just calculated that this bond will cost us $7,473, excluding commission fees, accrued interest, and taxes. 
Now, if we held this bond till maturity, we would receive our $7,000 back from the company as we initially agreed upon. This means that we would lose $473.09 because we paid $7,473.09 for it, but we're only getting back our initial $7,000. This loss is essentially going to be offset by our coupon payments of $1440. This means our interest income of $1440 will be reduced by $473.09 since we had to pay a premium for this bond. At the maturity date of the bond, we will make roughly $966.94. This is a pretty simple way for you to evaluate how much you will make off of a bond because you use the numbers that are given to you instead of guessing how the markets will fluctuate in the future. There are a few risks such as inflation risk or interest, interest rate risk that can also be considered, but let's save that for another video. Moving forward, we have the bonds rating, which helps us identify the credit quality of the issuing company, such as George Weston's triple B rating. As a buyer, you want to be confident in the issuer's ability to pay back the bond's principal plus the interest on time. And lastly, we have the inventory, which simply means how many of this particular bond is available through RBC. Now you can scroll through the list of bonds that are offered and choose which investment would be ideal for you. The main pieces of information you will need for the bond are the maturity date, coupon rate, rating, and the minimum purchase amount. So regardless of what website you use, keep an eye out for these terms. I hope this video helped you understand how to check a bond online. Thanks for watching.